Hi everybody, Dan Mitzi Harris here, product designer at GitLab, working in the foundations group. I'm going to be talking about some of the validation work we've done uh, prior to implementing some recent typography changes into the product. Uh, optimistic 13 minutes, we're going to look at what the changes are, motivations, what what is a type scale, the process we did, and then up next as well. So for those of you who just want to cut straight to the chase, um, let's have a look at what's changing and what we are going to implement. Um, you might remember around 10 months ago, we soft launched a type scale in the UI kit. Um, it's caused a little bit of confusion because it hasn't ended up in the product yet, um, but this is the before here. And after our validation, uh, this is what we're going to be moving forward with to implement in the product. Um, as I said, the type scale isn't currently implemented in the product, uh, but here's how a settings page looks now. Uh, notice we've got a bunch of headings and this is the after. So much more contrast between this level two and this level three. Again, for security, we've got four levels of headings here. One, two, three, four. Um, and with the new scale, those differences are much more pronounced. It's coming soon. I hope you enjoy it. And if that's all you wanted to see, you can be on your merry way. But for the rest of us, uh, let's have a look at some of the motivations behind um, what's going on here. Typography in GitLab is very important. Here is uh, part of the product with all of the text removed. And another part, and as you can see, once we take text away, there isn't actually a lot left. Um, type is everywhere. Recently, Sasha and Jeremy wrote a blog post and they argued that perhaps it's the most crucial part of the UI. If we look at how pajamas is structured, typography links to pretty much everything. Um, not only that, it also accounts for a lot of the visual hierarchy. It controls the delivery of information from the system to our end users, and it lets end users know where to focus their attention. There's a couple of different things that we can use in GitLab for visual hierarchy. Color and contrast can help set things. Size we use, um, and proximity and grouping. My university lecturers would be very pleased that I'm going to now talk about the squint test to help us test some of this, um, uh, this visual hierarchy. And the idea is that if you squint, you can see what's having the most visual weight. And this is that applied to one of those examples. So like I said, typography is not a new thing. We know it's important at GitLab. Um, while researching for this work, I found issues seven years old where we're talking about contrast between heading sizes, introducing scales, um, implementing improvements to it, and ultimately um, building some new scales when we introduced the new typefaces recently. Um, and this is where we find ourselves today, where I was tasked with performing some validation around these type scales. Um, so we could have some confidence before we implement it in the product. So some of you might be thinking, what is a type scale? Well, a classic typographic scale is a collection of font sizes that are in visual harmony. The typographer or the product designer chooses the sizes in the same way a musician might choose a note from a scale. Uh, this is, comes from when uh, glyphs were made out of hard substances like metal or wood. Multiple glyphs needed to assemble a page, so it came built into furniture. But this object is fixed and hard, it can't be resized, and to help overcome storage and transport costs, a limited number of sizes is produced. This followed through to desktop publishing. Um, we see it in Google Slides and Figma, uh, all the way from the beginning of Photoshop version one. But what are our goals now? We no longer have need for limited sizes for storage. We don't need whole rooms to store our typefaces. They live in our computers and we no longer have control of the medium. Early typesetters had uh, could control the paper and the sizes, but browser zoom, style overrides, OSs and browsers do their own thing. We don't have control anymore. But it comes back to visual hierarchy. Um, 
something that I found interesting is a lot of these are based on musical scales, which I think is quite interesting. This again goes back to even five years ago, we were basing stuff on musical scales, minor thirds, major thirds, these relationships between notes in music we were using to dictate relationships between typeface sizes. Uh, I thought it'd be quite interesting to listen to some of them, um, just to see if you think that what works in the visual and works in sound uh, matches up. So here is a major second. Watch your speakers if it's loud. A little bit spicy for the major seconds, major thirds. Quite mysterious, quite like that one. And I also was interested, what about if we take ratios from uh, the visual world? So the golden ratio, the ultimate ratio, you've probably seen it slapped over every logo redesign and wave the magic hands. Here's how that sounds. And you can decide if we can apply musical rules and visual rules. Lovely stuff. See some shaking heads there in the chat. So the process, how do we actually go about validating some of this stuff? Uh, so like I said, the first step is working out what does validation mean? How can we uh, increase our confidence before we put it in the UI? Uh, we originally looked at a few options, uh, but I'm going to focus on some visual validation exercises that we did. Uh, so the first step is finding out what pages are important in the app. That involved asking the whole company, hey, what pages are important to your users? And we got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of responses back. Uh, about 40 pages in total, which we evaluated um, for suitability. We had limited time, so we wanted to balance a, testing a range of styles, but also make sure we're testing relationships between headings. So we needed to make sure there are multiple headings on a page. Most of the pages that we didn't review were because they only had one heading or less, which is a different problem to tackle for a different day. We weren't sure if we'd need to make changes to the scale while we were validating. So we created some basic components for headings where we could change the sizes. If when we looked at it, we found we needed to change them. Um, and we also knew that we wanted to review big screens and small screens. So we took a huge bunch of screenshots, which we can see at the bottom, for pages at both 1920 and 390 width. Uh, the 390 width was chosen so we could view it on a real mobile phone and viewing on a real device is much more representative for making these scale-based judgments. Next step, very tedious screenshot collage where we chop up the screenshots um, and add it in our components mix. Um, we did this so we didn't have to recreate all of the 20 pages um, and our components allowed us to make updates in one place and change it elsewhere. When we review them, we did identify some gaps in the guidelines um, and some things that we didn't, didn't quite like about the scale. Some stuff around spacing is missing. There were unanswered questions about sticky headers, tops of pages, what we were gonna do when there was no headings and um, the relationship between especially H1, H2 and three visually didn't look quite right. So we made, made a bunch of changes and we're feeling super chuffed with ourselves. So we presented it to some of our peers Huge thank you to everyone who took the time to review it. And we came out with some clear uh, takeaways. So we presented, hey, here's the before, um, here's the after in that format. Uh, we weren't feeling so chuffed with ourselves after peer review, 
Um, but we did end up getting some really good feedback that um, we were able to action. We chosen to increase the differentiation between H1, 2, 3, and 4, reduce it between H4, 5, 6. And something that we also realized was missing was this um, needing to abstract out the font scale, move it away from headings, paragraphs, all of that, and have an underlying scale that we could use else where this did break some of the um, music relationships and the number relationships that we tried uh, to, to do before. Um, rather than a straight line as the size is increased, you can see this wonky line um, where this shift angle is where we've had to increase the contrast. Um, and you can see it here with the max and min values depending on the screen size. But with the feedback um, and this underlying scale, we had enough confidence that we could implement it in GitLab and it prepares as well for tokens work coming soon. So again, a quick, another look at the before and after. Um, here's the before of settings. Here's the after, hopefully you can see the increased contrast, especially in the squint test. Yeah, and again, for security. So I know that was really fast, lots of slides. Uh, I'm a panicker when it comes to presentations, so I shove so much stuff in. But what's coming up next? Here's where we are as of Monday um, and our path to get it into GitLab. Right now there's an MRN review for getting pajamas docs updated. Uh, myself, Jeremy, a few others will be working on getting into GitLab UI, um, collaborating hopefully with paper cuts to get it available in GitLab soon. And uh, hopefully you've all seen the announcements about the UI kit updates coming at the end of this milestone. But as a quick for product designers, what does this mean for you and how can you help? I think I would just really encourage you to help users navigate through the product. And you can do this by ensuring there's good visual hierarchy for users using headings as anchors to group and content and section up content. Also applying semantic hierarchy for users who rely more on just their eyes, use heading levels that make logical sense rather than the visual preference. Communicate these things while in handover to increase the chance of it making into the product as we often rely on others to build our designs and check for these things in reviews to make sure the system is applied to our users benefit and communicate with us in foundations if it's not fit for purpose. Oh, one more in case anyone was wondering what the new scale sounds like. Here it is. Thanks. Christy, do you want to ask your question since you have a hard stop? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, first of all, thank you. This is fascinating. I loved it. Um, so I know there is a discussion about possibly rolling back GitLab SANS in favor of system fonts again. No one panic. No decisions have been made. It is a conversation that is happening. Um, but what I'm curious about is what the impact of that decision, if it were made, would have on these type changes that we've made. I do have to go, so I'm hoping someone will take notes, and I will come back and look at the agenda as soon as I'm done with my next meeting. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, so the um, I think the biggest impact is we'll have less confidence in the relationships and the visual hierarchy because the, the system fonts have different um, weight attributes. Um, and we've tested assuming a single font. Even though there are differences in browser rendering and operating system rendering, they're significantly less than the difference of those combined with system fonts. Um, it has been useful though, even if we did roll back because it allowed us to see where there were gaps in guidelines, where there were pages that 
didn't have headings or headings were used in a way that might make it harder for users to navigate. So even moving forward, we'll be able to fix some of those issues. And if we have to roll back, then there'll be a smaller subset of issues that we'll need to tackle. I have the next question, Dan. Um, so you mentioned that some of the things have been updated Figma, but not so much in the product yet. So then we kind of have that weird handoff struggle where we're like, okay, engineering, make this thing, except we don't have these things necessarily available yet to you in the product. So then that's why you might find like an, I don't know, like an H4 where it like doesn't belong or something. Um, so is that possible to hold that level of accountability like and say like a merge request review? Because you mentioned like, yeah, let's try and get the right things with the product. I'm like, okay, if I get a merge request review and the page titles are wrong, let's say in settings, like should I be trying to be like, no, go fix this? I'm like, no, not quite yet. Yeah, I think there's levels of fixing things. Um, and I've been tagged in a couple of different merge request reviews about this particular thing in the past couple of weeks. And the advice I gave in the reviews is the advice I think I'd say here is focus on the, the semantics and let the styles update later. So if you choose the correct heading, le heading level based on um, what makes logical sense, so if you've got your H1s, your first one in the page, H2s come underneath it, and H3s only come under H2s, then and select that both that in Figma and in code, when they come into alignment, your styles will update um, for free. It's perhaps a little bit more, uh, it's very easy to say that, perhaps is just a, aha, do it and everything will be okay. Um, but I'm not sure there's another way at the minute without introducing debt uh, when there's quite a lot of it already. Okay, gotcha. I still don't know like what I would do in the scenario where like there's like an H2 and that's like the appropriate size according to the design, but like the H1 would make it ginormous and everybody's like, why is this thing so big on the screen and nothing else is? Um, but maybe that's one of those like, well, maybe we would just hold off on updating that one semantically until we do have proper stylings ready. Maybe the, the ends shouldn't be that different. It's the differences in the middle that, mm -hmm. uh, that are not quite there yet. Okay, got it. There's one read only comment. Does anybody else want to add a question or comment for Dan? Okay, thanks, Dan. I'm going to stop the recording now.